Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dial R's Through the Tactics. We got a long one tonight, so strap in. This is going to be my deep dive into Claire, who I am referring to as Rita Vertasky. For those of you who know, you know. Uh, and if you've uh, never seen one of these videos before, basically, I'm going to go through everything. I'm going to go through her kit as it is in-game with all the modifiers. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to explain uh, how to gear her, in, in my opinion, the best ways to gear her. Uh, and then I'm going to show you a bunch of footage uh, of her in-game at Immortal Zero, at Hyper Evolved, at X30. Uh, why don't I stop on my way and show you guys mid-level? Because I kind of... There's a couple reasons. The easy, selfish reason is I want her up to a certain level, like, instantly, so I can play with my toy when I wake up in the morning, right? Because I, I'm not only a content creator, I love this game, I like to play this game. So, of course, I want my toy. <laughs> it's like Christmas on Thursdays. So, I, I take her, I, I pull on her, and I use jeans, I take her right to Immortal, I hyper-evolve her, I put her at X30, and she's already to go. Two, in my opinion, this will give you an idea of what she's going to do once you get her up to the same level. So... You can know, is this person, if this, if this person's good at Mythic 1, what does that prove? It proves nothing. If they suck at Endgame, well then you just wasted a whole lot of resources getting them up there. So, those are my two reasons. Take it or leave it. Alright, so, let's get over here. Do I, I just unlocked her on this account. This is my streaming account. It's going to be forever till she's built up here. Where is she? Look at her. Oh, yeah. I love the character model. We're going to look at her a little bit more closely in-game, but let's jump straight into the deep dive and then uh, stay tuned after the deep dive for some gameplay footage of her in-game, uh, where you can use her. Uh, is she good? Viable? Etc. Etc. And then we'll come back here uh, live for my final thoughts where I will also give her my initial grade. And keep in mind, this is day one and my grades have changed. Uh, a, like Samael went up, Ares went up a lot. Most of them though, they stay where they are, where they stay at their initial impression level, and that's just fine. Okay. All right, so let's get over to the deep dive. All right, let's do this. Claire, AKA Rita Vrutaski. You'll notice mine right off the bat is Hyper Evolved, is Immortal Zero, is Summit level 88. Uh, straight to X30. Sorry, I'm not messing around. You guys can go. I think uh, Veiled Shot usually does some uh, mythic testing if you guys need to see her at lower levels. But for the purpose of my video, we're going all in, baby. Okay. Uh, that is such a cool... I, I really, really do enjoy her character model. It is very, very cool. Right? Like, this is what... This is what Rebecca should have been. Remember we were all kind of up in arms because Rebecca was all very, like, kitty, very preview best in looking yeah yeah claire is awesome anyways let's dive into the kit really quick let's go over all the goodies so this is claire's ultimate uh, keep in mind she is a rage based uh, vanguard if you guys don't know how to see that it's right here trait you can see um you can't see this is just her trait info but you see right there beside the word skill right above her ultimate it's it is a rage icon so her ultimate, Claire, jumps and charges, she is a charger, into the designated area, after which she slams the ground. So she's going to run in, then jump and slam. She doesn't jump up and slam. She runs in and slams. Dealing damage equal to 1,000% of her attack within 5 meters of the impact point. Well, maybe she does jump, I don't know. Enemies within uh, 2.5 meters of the impact point receive two times more damage so a two thousand percent of her attack a big old nuke when jumping if there is an enemy nearby she must jump in and you know it sounds like it says she runs in and jumps but she must jump into the area if there's an enemy nearby when she leaps she will grab them and smash them into the center of the area with her uh, she will prioritize heroes without control immunity so if someone is say stunned or cc'd she will prefer to grab a unit that is not, you know, so. This skill cannot crit, so she is a non-critting uh, unit. Now, her talent modifiers read uh, that, that targets hit by the ultimate have a 30% chance, depending on Claire's accuracy, to be stunned for two seconds. So 30% is a fairly low base rate, meaning you would need, so 200 would bump it up to 60, 
400 would bump it up to 90. So you would need almost 500 accuracy to guarantee. It's, it's a little under that. Uh, 500 accuracy would, would be a 105% chance. But to stun, that is that is fairly low, uh, which is going to almost negate the your want and desire to build accuracy over some of the other stats that behoove her and benefit her more. So the exclusive effect, before activation, she will enter the fearless state. We'll get to what that means a little bit later. So her first common skill, supersonic boxing, doesn't that sound awesome? Claire performs two heavy strikes at the target with lightning precision. Each strike dealing damage equal to 400% of her attack. So fairly straightforward, just a, a one-two punch. Talent modifier reads with the second blow deals additional damage equal to 50% of her shield's current strength. Now that is going to be dictated by, uh, say, like uh, Hagridon, if you're running Fiona, or her fearless state, which gives her a shield. So her, the second hit is going to be more. It's going to be increased. Um, what says additional 50% of the shield's current strength. Now, how do we measure the shield's current strength? I don't know. That's kind of a ambiguous uh, multiplier or modifier on the damage. The exclusive effect, the second hit deals AOE damage in a fan-shaped area to enemies behind the, behind the target. So she hits through. So she's hitting the target, but then she's gonna, the second hit is gonna do a fan-shaped AOE it says behind the target, which is kind of cool. That's kind that's kind of cool, huh? I like that. I like that. Second common skill, flame reflector. So this is where the fearless state is is kind of fleshed out. So gain a shield equal to 32% of her max HP and restore 35 rage every second for eight seconds. Keep in mind it takes 600 rage to reach an ultimate, and she's also gonna be gaining rage on hit. That's how Rage works. So this is just a way for her to do her ultimates faster. Uh, shield durability and the level the level modifiers is it's 40% of her max HP. Okay. So that's the Fearless State. Fearless State is a shield and restores increased Rage, basically. Tell a modifier at the start of battle, she immediately enters Fearless State. So she's immediately going to have a shield and she's immediately going to get Rage fast right when the battle starts, which is going to come into play when we talk about her accuracy later and her gear. Flame Reflector, so her exclusive enhancement, in the Fearless State, she's gonna be due, basically she gets 40% damage reduction. So because of this and because of how her passive works, that's going to affect her gearing. So basically this is how she gains her damage mitigation is every time she has this up, which is at the beginning of the battle, every time she casts, and every time she casts this skill, she gets basically 40% damage reduction. Mechanical Exaltation, this is her passive. That's a cool name too, by the way. That's a, that's a cool band name. So Claire receives a permanent attack bonus equal to 2% of her max HP. So kind of like Leo, I do believe. Um, and I do believe a lot of the vanguards, Ares and uh, Barag, both also convert HP into attack because uh, the vanguards in general are, are frontline melee units. As such, they're going to be getting hit. As such, they need to survive. And then, as such, they you know they they need to hit. They need to kill really fast. And as such, they're going to take use of uh, benefiting of that conversion of HP to attack. Every time Claire takes damage, she's going to restore HP equal to 2% of her max HP. So the more HP she has, the, the higher she's, or the more she's going to heal, uh, which is going to, she's going to, basically she scales really well with HP. Uh, five seconds into the battle, Claire is going to recover, uh, and it's actually 20, 250 to 550 rage, depending on her accuracy, with 150 being the max. So if you have 150 accuracy, after five seconds after the battle, she's going to basically gain a full rage bar. That sounds really good, but that might not be uh, very beneficial in practicality, in practice. And we'll, we'll discuss that later. Talent modifier, for each allied vanguard hero, she's going to restore 10 rage per second up to 30. 
So that means that she's ideal in a group of four vanguards, so her and then three allied vanguard heroes. I'm unsure whether or not she counts herself in that calculation, but if she doesn't, then you're gonna want to run three other vanguards and she's gonna gain 30 rage per second. Keep in mind, 600 is the max, but also keep in mind that she's going to be recovering it really quickly through fearless state and she's gonna be recovering it due to just the fact how rage works, as in she gets hits the face, she builds rage. Basically, she's a rage machine. She's gonna be just full rage all the time. Talent modifier, or the exclusive effect, sorry. This is her X30. So, so this is her, her the, the red rune X30. When Claire receives fatal damage, so when she dies, she's gonna avoid death and become invincible for two seconds. Instantly entering the fearless state, which is going to increase rage and give her damage reduction. And this can only be activated one time. What's unfortunate is I think she would be even better if she also restored HP on death. Because like say Leo, Leo's ultimate has um, lifesteal. So like Leo can die get a full a full ultimate life steal himself back up and then uh, be basically good to go whereas claire once she dies like this isn't this isn't a great revive mechanic because she's going to come back with no health right um and she's not going to gain it back very quickly she only gains it back through hagridon and through the two percent of her max hp when she's taking damage, but of course she's gonna have no HP after she dies. So this is basically just giving her a little bit more time on the field. Keep in mind, it's it's not as good as it sounds because like, like I said, like Leo, she doesn't gain a whole bunch of HP back. And I think even Barag, when he dies, he gains HP back when he revives. So uh, not as good as it sounds, but that is her X30. Uh, let's look at the exclusive for a second because the exclusive is pretty cool. It's a damage amplification, which is just damage bonus, damage reduction, and HP. So now she gets to kind of triple dip here because damage reduction, very, very nice. She She's definitely going to want that for survivability. Uh, HP is great for a Vanguard. And keep in mind, she's converting HP into attack. So just, just the, the stats alone from X20 to X30 is very, very beneficial. Um, even if I still think that the, her X30 mechanic isn't that great. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend, regardless of that, to take her up to X30, more so for the stats than anything. And you know what? Sure, cool. You know, once you take her up to X30, she's gonna be hitting a little bit harder. Um, she's gonna probably get one ultimate off um, after she dies. Um, and that could make that could swing the difference in the battle. So uh, I say this is a decent X30, but it's not completely mandatory. Uh, I would do it for the stats alone. Talent modifiers, anything going on here? When continue to attack same target, um, that's kind of weird. Um, the damage done to the enemy will increase up to 5%. Basic attacks from the target enemies deal 50% less damage within four seconds of damaging them. Okay, so a little bit of uh, damage mitigation there. The lower the HP falls, the higher the extra attribute the hero will get when covered by a shield up to 8% of shield value. So the lower her HP, the higher of a shield she's gonna get from Fearless State. Now you disregard that noise. Uh, riot proficiency, I like that. When being critically hit, uh, the damage taken is reduced by 8% and it can only happen once every two seconds. Okay, so that's a little bit more of a crit damage reduction, which I will notice too, she does get crit damage reduction in her uh, uh, her talents, which is kind of nice. So she basically just gets defense attack, HP, and the only other odd one out is crit damage reduction, which vanguards definitely want as much crit damage reduction as they can get. Okay. Okay, so what does the game recommend? Core stats, HP, accuracy, and attack. Yes, I agree. What gear sets do they recommend? Charge, blessed, and vigorous. I find that funny because when you go to gear her, it doesn't recommend blessed. It recommends charge, Hawkeye, and vigorous. Let's see, is Hawkeye on there? No, it is not. Okay, so that is something to note. Uh, e even they kind of screwed up a little bit there. And they are recommending that she is a front row unit. 
Uh, recommended units to run her with Aries and Barag. No, no kidding. Yes. Okay. Okay, cool. So keep in mind, they recommend blessed, but when you go to gear her, they're not going to. Now we're going to get into the gearing. So it is early, early days. We are still testing, but in my opinion, if you do not have, if you were a new player, if you do not have any charged or surge set, you could probably get away with running a mix of Hawkeye for accuracy and Vigorous, right? Because she wants HP. I, I would say you could even run full Vigorous. I'm gonna, you'll see on my spreadsheet, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have a full Vigorous as a starting build, and then I'm gonna have a little bit, I'm gonna have a build, a starting accuracy build, and then I'm gonna have a surge build. This would be, if you don't have a good charge set, you can run a surge set. Now, you can run the surge set two ways. You can go HP, if you wanna get a little bit of accuracy, as you see, I have 70 from gear, which is going to give her uh, 132, so not quite 150 for that extra rage off the beginning. If you don't want to go the accuracy route, you can go uh, HP head and then HP hands. You can go vigorous or blessed and then HP boots. And then uh, for substats, you want to look for HP first, accuracy, damage reduction, crit damage reduction, attack. Okay? So if you, again, you want to run a surge set if you don't have a charge set. Charge set is just better. Uh, and then now when we're talking about charge sets, you can run, you can go one of two ways. Okay. And again, it's a little bit contentious here and I, I'm going to explain that. So that 150 accuracy, it seems like from her kit, you want a minimum of 150 accuracy and that's just going to give you that initial rage bump at the beginning of battle, five seconds in. Okay. So if you have 150, you're going to basically get a full rage bar. So you can build her with a charge set and uh, you can go HP, HP, HP on the bottom. You're going to need some decent a uh, accuracy substats as you see this uh, plus two on the legs, a little bit uh, on the chest, plus one on the weapon. And then I got plus one on the head and I got none on the hands. But uh, at 87 accuracy from gear, it does put me at that 150, a little bit over actually. I think I'm what, 151, yes, 151. So I'm bang on the 150 with this gear set. It, in my opinion as well, I'd say that the, the accuracy build is more PVP if you were going to run it because you know the stuns and the increased rage one time is really only beneficial in quick fights and probably only beneficial in PVP. So if you want to run 150 accuracy, you can go HP hands, HP head, HP boots, but you're gonna have to run a Hawkeye set and you're gonna have to have decent, you're gonna have to have maxed out accuracy guild tech for vanguards and you're gonna have to have some decent accuracy substat rolls on your gear. Now, this is my preferred build. I'm going to call this the end game build. This is what I am going to temper out this is what I recommend if I had to recommend, but I had to talk about the other sets because some people are going to recommend those sets. I'm going to recommend you run Blessed and Charge, and I'm going to recommend that you do not prioritize accuracy. As you see from gear, I'm only getting 20, 20 from gear. Instead, what you're gonna prioritize is HP primary hands, HP primary head, HP primary boots, the same as before but you're going to prioritize HP, damage reduction, then crit damage reduction and accuracy last, okay? And then uh, of course I would want to run, uh, I want I would prefer these uh, hands, helm and feet be charged because then I can temper them um, because you're definitely gonna want um, charge on your boots because you wanna temper that first up to uh, temper two because that's gonna give you the biggest HP bump, which is what she's gonna benefit the most from. And then you wanna run uh, tempered uh, helm next, and then do the, your top level, or do the other charge pieces, because you wanna complete that charge set first. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have, I, I, I can't get HP charge hands or head to drop, or to, to smelt, I just can't do it. And I spend a lot of tickets in Katosian Triangle, can't get it. 
Now I wanna explain the accuracy versus damage reduction um, theory. So when I have tested her, there are, uh, in, my, in my testing, there are more instances than not where in that first five seconds, I still haven't reached, I still haven't done an ultimate. I am close to an ultimate. And what that means is that after five seconds, when, I get, when I'm running the accuracy build, when I get that big rage bump, I'm not benefiting, benefiting from it at all because it's basically getting that bump into a full rage bar. Now, if you run her front line, you know, right at the front where she can take more hits, then she can get an ultimate off before the five seconds, and then you can benefit from that extra one ultimate after five seconds. But it's, it's a chance. You may or may not get it. You may or may not waste it uh, because you may not have actually, if you get stunned, then no, you're not getting an ultimate off and you're going to waste. You're basically, accuracy is a dead stat for you after that. If you get stunned, if you get CC'd and you don't do an ultimate, or if you just don't do an ultimate because you're not taking enough damage, you are, n or you are not going to benefit from an accuracy set. In that case, this set with a whole lot more damage reduction is going to keep you alive and keep you going fast or going into the fight longer. You see this set, 1.4 million from gear. This set, 1.4 million from gear. The difference is 19.5% damage reduction versus 44 and this set has more attack because I'm not prioritizing accuracy on my substats. So this is this will be my final closing argument on gear. Do what works best for you. But I think that given the the RNG niche niche nature of the accuracy build, I would not prioritize accuracy in my opinion, but that is just my opinion. And this is the ultimate gear set that I would say is best in slot for her. Now that can change with further testing and I will update and reflect that in my spreadsheet when it changes or when my opinion changes. So that is the gear, difficult, difficult. Lots of stuff you can do for gearing. Again, from that starter vigorous set all the way to, to the, through the surge set and through the charge sets. Okay, so that is the, the deep dive into her kit and into her gear. Now let's go show her off, okay? All right, here we go. The, the best place I could probably show her off is in this fight. Why? Because there's no chance of dying. You're just going to get a straight up damage meter. You're just going to get straight up. Let's see how much damage she can do. Now, I have noticed that, that this is my best. Uh, oh, don't put her in back into charge. There we go. This is going to give us the best numbers. Now, this test, this is the PVE test. So, Ares is Immortal 5 X30, Barag Immortal 5 X30, um, and Hyper Evolved 120, whereas Claire is only Hyper Evolved 80. She is X30, but she is Immortal 0. So, let's run this test. Everybody's on auto, but we're going to be looking at the damage meter to get a sense of what she can do for damage. So right there, when she does her ultimate, uh, she gets a big old nuke. So she is, you see she's gonna jump ahead, but Ares will start to outpace her, but Ares has a full tempered charge set, full tempered charge set, and he's immortal five, and he's hyper evolved 120. So it's a not a fair apples to apples comparison between Ares and between Claire. But you do notice that uh, Barag, who has similarly built gear, right? Not, I think Barag, it's not a fully tempered set. Claire is not a fully tempered set. But Barag is X30, 120, and Immortal 5. And Claire is keeping up. Claire's keeping up. She's falling, she will slowly fall behind, but she is doing a pretty good job of keeping up with Barag and Ares in comparison. If you were to put uh, Batu or Leo into this fight, it, it's it's a non-comparison. In PvE, it, they're, they are the bottom. They're the bottom. The top three vanguards are Ares, Barag, and Claire. And I am putting Claire above Barag because you can see the damage number. She is very, very close to him. Very, very close. And she is far less developed. Far less developed. So... This is basically showing off that Claire is a damn good damage dealer. Um, we'll see 
uh, with further evolutions if she can rival and with a fully charged set. I can't wait to get her into a fully tempered charge set. We'll see with, with, at that point if she is Ares uh, equivalent or if she is his superior. Because right now I kind of do have to give the edge to Ares. Because Ares also does have a lot more survivability than Claire. But this, this battle is just to kind of highlight um, how much damage she can do. So Barag did 2.3 billion. Uh, Claire did, uh, oh, look at that, best score ever. Okay, cool. And Claire did uh, two, well, here was, I guess I can't look at it. I think it was 2.3 and 2.1. So we're gonna call that our PVE test. I can't challenge Frontline because I passed it. I passed it. If we're gonna talk about how I would run her, um, let's look at PVP now. Um, but, well, first let's go to the board. You're obviously going to run her, well, you're not gonna run her in Soul Mine. You may, but you're not probably going to. Crimson Abyss, you're not gonna run her. You are gonna use her in Arena. Katoji and Triangle, as it stands now, um, Vanguards really don't have a place here. In Thundercliff, which is the Vanguard dungeon, uh, Assassins still do better. Uh, we'll, that it, we'll, we'll see what happens when levels, when Hell level 10, or no, 12 opens whether or not assassins can still do it or if you need vanguards. But for now, uh, vanguards aren't really doing anything here. Lost Valley, they're not doing anything. Um, really, it's just Endless and probably Twilight Lands for a uh, vanguard-specific uh, boss, which is probably going to come up next month. So really, that just leaves us with PvP if we're talking about testing. Uh, and the vanguards are kind of niche. Like, they don't have a whole lot of uses in the game. But they are very strong in PvP. Uh, so let's start looking. Uh, I want to show you... Uh, we're going to go right to it. We're going to go right to the big dog. Zoso. Okay. So, I've done a lot of testing on Zoso this morning. He is a 9.7 million... SP Hunter team. The SP Hunter team is generally considered the the tip of the spear, the most meta of meta. Um, this SP even gives the uh, Caraxia SP Assassin team a really, really hard run for its money. Uh, I'd say 9 out of 10 times, Artemis is going to kick Korra's butt. It's just, it's, just, it's just how it is. But look at the team comp we're going to run up against it. So we are going to, we aren't even going to run this. Why? Because if we run it in, I'd say in a, in a, in a hell arena setting or in a summon arena setting, we're going to want that flashpoint or that revitalization crystal for whatever team that Purin is on. So here's the team. You see it is all vanguards. Uh, we got Barag, Ares, and Claire in their charged blessed sets. And then we have Leo and Batu in charged vigorous sets. Now, I did have Barag in a blessed subset, but I needed his blessed gear for Claire. So I hope this works because in my testing, this worked about 60 to 80% of the time, this counter worked. Uh, Ares is really hard to, to predict. Like, see there, I, I, I stunned him. So that's gonna help uh, turn this battle in, in my favor. But uh, sometimes it wins. It wins more often than it loses. But it does lose. Like, see, right now, we are nowhere near the Hunters. Claire, there we go. Claire and Ares just jumped, jumped into the Hunters, and we just killed Artemis. Okay? So you see, this This is how it usually goes. And now we just got to deal with uh, their, their Ares. is usually the last one standing, and he is. You see, everybody's standing except for Leo. Leo's dead. We just got to get through Ares, which can be a pain in the butt. There goes Batu. There he's dead. So four people standing. That's usually how it goes. A good fight. Let's look at the stats. So Ares did the majority of the damage. Followed up closely by Claire. And keep in mind, Ares is uh, Immortal 5, fully tempered. So that is good. That is a good showcase of how good Claire is. Uh, we do. We were running Claire in the Bless set, not the Hawkeye set, so not the accuracy build, because I don't think it really works well. If we just do one more, uh, we're gonna fast forward though. Boom. Let's see. Do I win? No. See, there we go. So it doesn't always win. Like I said, it's not. 
it, it's it, it let's let's try it again let's do three fights come on don't don't make a fool out of me there we go we won like i said about a 60 to a 70 75 percent win rate against the the best team in the game currently that is an ace in my pocket because this is a free-to-play friendly team all of those units you should have and you can build without any money now it is going to take some time and effort to build up them to efficient immortal levels and to or to official uh um to developed evolution levels and gear levels you do need gear and you you do need you do kind of need an immortal five aries as your base point but i wanted to show that to you right off the bat now let's start looking at other teams let's start doing other teams so this is a tank team but not really a tank team so we're not going to fight it uh, we're only going up against people that are real teams okay so this is uh, an energy team, and this is the good energy team. So it, it is, uh, even though it doesn't have the good prototype, uh, it does have the the good setup. Everyone's 120, except for Purin and, or the supports, which is fine. Now, this isn't a good matchup for Vanguards because they can't get to the back line because of Cariolis's uh, nullification of charges. But they they can, since there's so much good sustain, uh, we can kind of just kind of just eat all the initial hits and then start doing some damage you see like leo there goes his first he's still immune um aries is doing his thing who's left that's it so we won but that was a that was i i don't want to say a lesser built energy team but it was a lesser built energy team now shrimps has a top energy team 6.5 uh, again he doesn't have the cosmos lord but his team is is arguably better than the last one and let's see how we do on this one it the fight itself is basically the same it's just his team is going to hit a lot harder so we definitely need aries to start going if aries gets nuked which he may yes yeah, see there we go they nuked us which is what can happen Right? They can just nullify everybody, stun everybody, then nuke you down. Uh, tank team. Okay, this is a good tank team. This is uh, probably one of the better uh, tank setups. Uh, because, But they are running Purin in it, which you're probably not going to see in a multi-PVP fight. And I don't expect... Tanks are Vanguard's weak spot. They, they just are. Tanks are just built to destroy Vanguard. Even this Vanguard team, which is the tip of the spear for Vanguard builds. You see, we're just not doing anything to them. Barog's dead already. Claire is uh, hanging on by a thread. Leo's hanging on by a thread. As soon as they get those, those ultimates off, it's pretty much done. But you see Claire is healing herself back up. She's still alive. She's hanging in there. And... Uh, we did win it so you can win it but it is going to be a coin flip and actually if I, I think the coin flip is going to go in the tanks favor so this is an assassin team with Korra um just I'm gonna it's a 10 million team I'm gonna show it for it for you guys but uh the vanguards do don't make any headway against Korra if you remember they did a, a hot fix to Korra uh, a little while ago that basically kind of nullified the Ares counter uh, or, or drastically nerfed the Ares counter and now he does not uh, because Koro is effectively wasting some of her skills whereas now if she doesn't if, if Ares ports away she just won't do it she'll cancel it and she'll get to do it again so yeah um, assassins you know, you're probably not going to beat assassins with uh, good assassins with a vanguard team uh, Lycan, I do believe, is running tanks. No, he's running Vanguard. So he's running Vanguard, but he's running more of um, a typical Vanguard team with um, Fiona. So let's see how my five Vanguard team does against his uh, normal Vanguard team. Keep in mind, there is no Claire on here either. And we should just be able just to destroy him, unfortunately. Ly Lycan is a top-notch player. Like, he usually is much, much better than me in PvE stuff. 
you see, yeah, his team is just getting eaten. Uh, my team still has five members standing. What I really, really like about uh, Claire being on the team is the fact that it does allow me to run five vanguards, which is nice. Don't need a support. You can just run five old vangs. They can kind of heal themselves up with Haggard on. Uh, Pal has another core assassin team. We are not going to try it. Uh, Volcano. So Volcano, that is a hodgepodge team. You're not going to see something like that in any arenas. Grimlock, what does Grimlock got? This is a tank team with Tachi. No res, so let's just let's just run it. Let's show you guys what it looks like. Um, for some reason, I think that the Tachi is going to make this uh, a loss because Grimlock is also a very, very good player. Although, look at, look at, uh, ooh, I thought we were gonna kill his Wamagon, but we did not. We did not, and yeah, they just annihilated me. This is usually the way that the tank versus Vanguard fight's gonna go, they're just gonna ground and pound you into the ground. Uh, I, I do like the Tachi on the tank team now, and I run her on my tank team as well. Mad Mole. I don't know who you run. Okay, so this is a 7.3 energy team. He does have notes of the Cosmos Lord, so this is looks like a near-maxed energy team. Our, our combat powers are equivalent, but you see, they just stun everybody, and if Ares doesn't get off, we're dead. They're just going to nuke us into oblivion. I would not attempt a Vanguard energy counter in Arena. Now, um, you can manipulate your Vanguard team to help here. So you could put uh, you could put Cariolus on your team, which will give you a bunch of damage. You could you could add other heroes, but again, in a four-team Hell Arena setting, this is the team that you would probably run. Um, right? So this is the team that I'm going to showcase. Fearless, okay. This is the Vanguard man himself. Now he is a maxed Ares. So we're going to test against Fearless. So he's running Artis and not Fang, but his Ares usually carries his team. But with the addition of Claire, um, I think that this is just going to be a, uh, a slaughter. I can't tell who's alive on his team. Yeah, he's, we're just down to Ares now. Look at everyone heals. Uh, ooh, ooh, Claire just just triggered her, her her immunity. Can we kill him? No, nope, Claire's dead. Yeah, like I said, his his Ares is a god. And yeah, yeah, okay. So it, it didn't matter. You know, even though he was running Nafang and Artis, we're down to Ares. Ares. So now it's a coin flip. But his is going to win because his has the Miranda injection. So I'm not going to get through him. And he wins. So, so do you need Claire? Do you even need Claire? <laughs> uh, so keep that in mind. That's cool. Good GG, fearless. Good job on that one. I do believe Genghis runs tanks. Yes, we're not going to win that. What does Beardy run? Tanks. You know, Tachi really kind of stuffs the vanguards. So what can the vanguards kill? Well, they can kill summoners dead flat. So as soon as they get going, yeah, like th this is this is the what doesn't kill summoners though? Like they just they just nuke summoners, but energy nuke summoners, assassins with Korra nuke summoners, but uh, tanks nuke summoners. But I would say that vanguards are the natural hard counter to summoners, and you see, yeah, it's just destroyed. So I think, I think that's all we're gonna see. I don't know, like I don't think I have anybody on my t on my friends list that has hunters. We can, we can go looking here. What is Toro? No, it's weird. Toro, you're running a, a Skur and Hattie on your team. Everybody's pretty much running tanks, assassins, vanguards, summoners. What about oh oh oh? No, no, that is a. I don't know if I even have any non Korra assassin teams. Uh, no. Now we're getting down into people I don't know. Idol, what do you got? Uh, you still got that 3.9 team? Come on, Idol, change your defense. Uh, no. All right, we're at the bottom of the list. Okay, here we go. This is a non Korra assassin team. Uh, note, though, he is running Impulsive Annihilation and Hagridon. 
So without Korra, will the assassins be able to do enough damage? Uh, my gut says no. But maybe. So there we go. I just, Ares just nuked Fiona and Pure in, in one volley. And yeah, Rickard's dead, pretty much. Uh, Batu is dead. They killed Batu, but Batu is kind of bait uh, on the Vanguard team, which is kind of nice. Yeah, they're not gonna stand up. So look at look at Claire up there. Look at the damage meter. Claire is the second highest uh, damage dealing Vanguard. So I should have been uh, really focusing on her and what she does, regardless of what the team does. And she was uh, the second highest damage dealer under Ares. So that is of note. So we're gonna wrap that up right there. And let's go to final thoughts. All right, make sure my mic is on. Final thoughts on Claire. Okay. There we go. Actually, let's go. Let's get some different music. Here we go. Okay, Claire. The problem that Claire has is the problem that the Vanguards have in general, is that they're kind of niche right now. There's not a whole lot of content that they are designed for other than uh, specialized instances like this current Endless Battle or what is going to be the uh, their their special battle in Twilight Lands or specific Vanguard Twilight Lands bosses that we all skip anyway. So what is the role of Claire? What is the role of Vanguards? Well, uh, the Vanguards used to be, and they can still be a good team. It's just that... With Korra Assassins, they beat them. With Karyolus uh, Energy, they, they beat them. Uh, I should say, those teams beat Vanguard. Um, tanks beat Vanguard. What else? What else, what else, what else? Okay, so Tanks beat Vanguard. Energy beats Vanguards. Assassins beat Vanguard. So what are we beating? We're beating, what, maybe Hunters? But I haven't been able to test Hunters. Yes, we beat Hunters. Hunters and Summoners. But, but... The hunter team that we can beat is the maxed hunter team. So, what can beat an Artemis hunter team? Right? Like, the one we fought was arguably harder because it had Ares on it. And we still beat it, no problem. But it, it can lose depending on the RNG of how our both of our Ares traverse the battlefield. So, it's, it's more consistent than it isn't. So, it's a higher win rate than a loss rate. But... Do you want to have? Do you want to rely on that in the finals in a summon arena or the last matches in a hell arena? Don't know. I will because there's nothing else that beats the Artemis Hunters, and I don't have one, and I'm not gonna have one. So, what grade am I gonna give Claire? Um, so I gave I gave Samael an A plus, but the difference is is Samael is used in a lot more places. Samael is used in Guild Hunt. Um, Claire and the Vanguards in general are not used in Guild Hunt. They were used in this last round of Guild Expedition, but we don't know what the Guild Expedition game mode is going to turn into. Whether it's going to come back with the same bosses, whether it's going to come back with rotating bosses, we don't know. But uh, we do know that she will have a role in there if Guild Hunt Exp or Guild Expedition becomes a regular game mode. So then she can she can go in that. She can be used in the battles where we're told to use her. Endless. Uh, and she can kill Artemis Hunter teams and Summoner teams. And that's really about it right now. Uh, until And again, this is day one. This is early days. So more things might come around. And I do like to do a follow-up video in a week's time. Uh, after she's been out just to get a handle. But, you know, what do we use Ares for? Uh, basically on, on PvP to disrupt things. And that's kind of where I think Claire's going to go. And uh, as of now, I think, I think Ares is going to be better than Claire. Ares is the OP unit on the Vanguard team. Claire is a nice support. She's not a support, but she's a nice um, additional cast member on that team. But she's definitely not the star of that team. So I'm going to have to give her, I'd say, an A-. Because she's decent. She does good damage. She's got some sustain. She does help that Vanguard team beat the Artemis team. Like, without her, it was very, very difficult. It was definitely not an easy win rate. So that if that alone is her purpose to kill SPs or to kill an SP, then I'll take it. So I'm going to give her an A minus at the time of this recording. Uh, tell me your grade, and I grade from F to S plus. Now I usually reserve S plus for like SPs, and then there's those odd characters that are considered S's, like Dominic, Sif, 
Cariolis, stuff like that. And she is none of them. So she's not bad unit, but she's not OP like we had heard prior to her release. But she's I like her. I like her kit. I like her aesthetic. I like her kit. I like I like the Vanguard team even better now. It's just I wish it killed more things. And I've heard people say that oh it's, it runs through tank teams or it runs through assassin teams. Well, which ones? Because I ran you guys through my whole friends list, picking off killers, people that are at the same level as me. I I don't know. Like I haven't seen good PVP testing anywhere else, and I will keep, be on the lookout for it because I watch a lot of people's content. So, A minus for now. Uh, but I, I do like her. Tell me your grade on my scale in the comment section below. What do we want to go for a word of the day? All right. What do I got up top here? <laughs> okay, I got a Mexican wrestling mask. No, He-Man. All right, yeah, He-Man. Uh, I have a in-the-box or in-the-plastic He-Man Masters of the Universe toy above my desk with Battle Cat beside him. They will never come out. I will never get to play with them. They are in the plastic forever. So He-Man and the grade of Claire down in the comment section below, please, everybody. Uh, wow, 46-minute video. If you made it to the end, I thank you profusely. Till next time, ladies and gentlemen, cheers, peace. You notice I'm not wearing a hat? Still didn't get my hair cut. Bye-bye.